الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد افلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها وقال عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم all praises of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings and his favors upon us i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and my dear sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the quran that there are winners and there are losers those who will win they are the ones who will continue to keep themselves pure and the losers are those who will corrupt themselves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in al-quran qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dassaha successful indeed are the ones who purify themselves who protect themselves from all type of evils or anything that Allah has declared as unlawful they keep away from it and the ones who corrupt themselves by engaging by involving in that which Allah has made as unlawful they engage in it they are doomed for failure they have uh, in some way corrupted themselves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he says in the quran la yastawi ashabul janna wa ashabun nar ashabul jannati humul faizun not equal are the companions of the fire in paradise or paradise and fire in the fire the hell fire the ones who are successful are the ones who will enter jannah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in the quran la yastawi ashabun nar wa ashabul jannah ashabul jannati humul faizun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that if you want to be successful then be from among the people of jannah be from among those who will be placed in the paradise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah also reminds us in the quran faman zuhziha anin nar wa udkhila al jannah faqad faz verily the one who is being saved from the fire of hell and he is admitted into the paradise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the one who would be successful and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters we we need continuously as we look to the future we need to continuously ponder upon our behavior we need to reflect 
upon our actions, every day is a day for reflection. Reflect upon what we have done and make sure that we are looking for that day when we will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzul nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, fear Allah and always look to what preparation you are making for that moment, that time when you will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there are times in life when people make resolutions and people think about another period in their lives. And sometimes what happens is that people just focus on the material aspect of their lives instead of focusing also on the spiritual aspect of their lives. We are made up of a body and soul. Yes, the body needs nourishment. The, the body needs its pleasure, its happiness. But the soul also needs nourishment. And, and we can't nourish one and don't nourish the other. We can't just think about our bodies and enjoying the luxuries and the beautification of this world and don't think about our soul and striving to uplift ourselves spiritually. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken to us so often in the Quran about time and about year after year. Matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that the year is made up of 12 months. He tells us about time and how He has created the different, uh, uh, He has created the sun, the moon, and how each one of them, they have their own course that they follow. Allah reminds us in the Quran, He says, Awala yarawna annahum yuftanun fi kulli am marratan or marratain thumma la yatubun wala hum yadhakkarun do not do they not see that they are being tried every year once or twice and sometimes people are being tried more than that sometimes for a moment when we are being tried we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know look at how the heart soften if you come to attend Salatul Janazah and especially if it is one of your dear ones, someone who is close to you and, and you start to reflect on your own lives everyone does that so Allah is saying to us that you are being tried and sometimes in the moment that you are being tried you think about your creator and after that trial period is gone we do not repent nor do we remember we always need to repent and we always need to remember we always need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we always need to remember 
the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. So as you think about the year ahead, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I want all of us to remember the bounties and favors of Allah with regards to five things. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اختنم خمسا قبل خمس Make use of five things before another five prevent you. شبابك قبل حرمك Your youth before you become old. And don't look at the Western way of youth, that you are only young when you are 14 and 15 and 18. No, look at youth in terms of how the companions of the Prophet ﷺ looked at it. They, they always thought that they, they, that they were still in their youthful age, even at 40. In time, they, they used that youthful age to spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that's when there is so much enthusiasm. There is so much eager, there's so much zeal when people are young, channel that youth in the right way. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sab'atun yudhilluhumullahu fi dhilli yawma la dhilla illa dhillum. There are seven categories of people who will be shaded on the day of judgment by the shade of Allah. On that day when there will be no shade except, except Allah's shade. One such category, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young person who was brought up in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He spent his, his youth in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadah, do everything that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that's ibadah. It, it's not that he, he has to spend all that time only in the masjid praying but spend the time being of benefit to others spend the time connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing that which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the second thing Sihataka qabla saqamik. Make use of your health before you become sick. In, in my dear brothers and my dear sisters, look at the trials. We just talk about Allah, sometimes try you once or twice or more in a year. Look at the trials. So many people were healthy yesterday and they're sick today. So many people, their illnesses took them to their grave. You, you don't know, none of us know if we will have the ability 
to talk the way we are talking or have the ability to hear the way we are hearing. None of us know if we will be able to use these limbs, our hands and our feet, our tongues, the same way that we are using them now. We are healthy. Give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make use of the help that Allah has given to us. نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس. There are two bounties that many people are sure losers when it comes to them. People don't pay attention to them. السحة والفراغ health and spare time. People don't pay attention to them. One of the Salaf, it is said that once a man went to him, he was one of the scholars from among the Salaf. A man went to him and he was complaining of extreme poverty. I'm very poor. But Allah did not give me much. And this scholar, his name was Yunus ibn Ubayn. He asked him, would you be willing to give away your sight for a certain amount of money. <laughs> what? Of course not. And then he asked him, would you be willing to give away your hands for a certain amount of money? And he said, of course not. Would you be willing to give away your feet for a certain amount of money? And the answer was, of course not. So he said to him, Yunus ibn Ubay, he said to this man, you are given hundreds of thousands of millions of blessings, yet you are complaining of poverty. You are complaining that you weren't given enough. Look at how much Allah has given you in making you able to see and use your hands and your feet. There are people who are blind. There are people who are crippled. There are people who cannot hear. There are people who cannot talk. And you come complaining about being poor. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, be thankful for the health that Allah has given to you and use it wisely. And as we are talking about the health, make sure that you protect it. You know, there are all sorts of people in the world today and people have their own opinions about things. But always remember this saying of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, لِكُلِّ دَائِن دَوَى For every disease, every illness, there is a cure. Not every one of us will know, know what the cure is. Allah has given knowledge to people so that they can bring the cure through the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are asked to protect yourselves in certain ways, follow the advice. Be conscious of what Allah has told us 
our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's saying, protect this health that Allah has given to you. If you're ill, seek the remedy for your illness. And all of you are aware of what I'm alluding to because we have so many people who think that they know more than others. And everyone thinks that he or she or, or his or her opinion is the best opinion. If there is help and you do not take it, then you are considered to be committing a sin in that sense. And so we need to be careful about the health that Allah has given unto us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said thirdly, and take care of ghinaka wa ghinaka qabla faqrik. Make use of your wealth before you become poor. The Prophet ﷺ said that the money that you spend in charity, that you spend in charity with your family, with your friends, with other people, the Prophet ﷺ said, it is your money. And the money that you leave behind is no longer yours. It's the money of your inheritors. Who would you like to spend it? Your inheritors? Or would you like to spend it knowing where you have spent it? And so the Prophet ﷺ, he said, don't look at charity that you only have to give to the masjid or to the school or to someone on the street. The morsel of food that you put into the mouth of your own family, your wife and your children, it's also charity. So spend upon them also. Make sure that you spend wisely. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّ وَلَا شَفَعَ وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah says to the believers, O you who believe, Spend from that which Allah has given to you. How beautiful it is being said in the Quran. Allah is saying that everything belongs to Him. It's not ours. Sometimes we think it's ours. He says, spend of what we have sustained you with, we have given to you. Before that day comes, when there will be no trafficking, there will be no friendship, and there will be no intercession. And the disbelievers, they are the wrongdoers. So we do believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do believe sincerely in our Creator. Let us exhibit that belief, let us demonstrate that belief by making sure that we do what Allah has commanded us to do. And so, whatever little you have, make sure that it is being used properly so that you can have the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fourthly, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغُلِكَ and make use of your time before you become occupied you have time use it for your benefit and use it for the benefit of others people need your time you can make a difference with that which Allah has blessed you with make use of the time not only in prayers and in going to make Hajj and Umrah but whatever time you have use it in such a way that you make a difference in society spend quality time with your family you, you, we don't want to lament afterwards to say when someone has left this world that I wish I had more time with him or her look at the time that Allah has given to each and every one of us and let us make sure that we use it wisely lastly the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said wa hayataka qabla mawtik and make use of your life before the death overcomes you. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we look ahead, let us always remember that this life is not everlasting. Life in this world, this worldly life, it's just a, a phase that we are going through, a different stage in our life. And we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to Him is our return. We have to return. When only Allah knows that. So while we are still breathing, while we still have life in our body, let, us, let it be used in such a way that every moment of it would be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have only created jinn and men for the purpose of worshipping me Allah says in the Quran worship spend this life in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا It is He Allah who created death and life so that He may test you to see which one of you is the best in conduct this is what matters, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And so my humble reminder to myself and you is that a year has passed in our lives. We are not getting younger, we are getting older. Every day, it's a, a step towards our graves. And so, if you feel that you are young, use that youth to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
If you know that Allah has given you good health, be thankful for it. And the things that you can do with it now, do it before a time comes when you will lament and say, I wish I had good health. If you think that Allah has blessed you with wealth, use that wealth so that it can bring benefit to you both in this world and in the world hereafter. Use the time that Allah has given to you so that you can make a difference in the lives of people whom you interact with. And don't wait until life is ready to be taken out of your body and out of our bodies. Our soul is about to be taken out of our bodies and then we turn to Allah and seek forgiveness. Every single day, turn to Allah and ask for His forgiveness. Repent because we all make mistakes and Allah is always there waiting for his servants to turn to him in repentance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us healthy, happy, comfortable lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with resources so that we can use it to benefit our families, our children, our our brothers and sisters, our communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'minin minad min kulli dhamb fa astaghfirun innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was Salatu was Salam, Wala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wala Alihi, was Habihi, Ajmain, Ridwanullahi, Alayhim, Layomitin, Amma Bad. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Wamal Hayatu Dunya, Illa Mata'ul Hurur. What is life? He says, life of this world is but goods and chattels of deception. Don't just get caught up in the vanities in the beautification of this world. We have to leave it one day. And so let us always look as to what we are preparing for the morrow. And always look to what preparation you are making for when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us and keep us on the straight path. May we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good health and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety. لَقَدْ مَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين والبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بالسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون قم الصلاة Thank <laughs> you.